Hey guys, it's Kusi. Welcome back to the seventh episode of this Zero to Hero Restoration Dude. And yes, I know there was no episode on Friday, I'm sorry, but the reason why I didn't have one out on Friday is simply because I felt like I lacked progress. I've been spamming plus 8 keys to get used to the dungeons, as I still feel like I don't know certain damage patterns on bosses. But today, we are gonna see some changes. Some for the better and one specific for the worst. We are going to attempt a lot of plus 10s and yes, the keyword is attempt, cause joining strangers keys paired with the inability to do my own duty every now and then can be very destructive. Also on the list we got the vault with a phenomenal banger of an item that buttered my egg roll in so many ways. And we get straight up insulted for being ass. Kinda weird this happened so late to be honest. However, there finally is a light at the end of the tunnel as I finally gave in and grabbed myself some weak auras, including a sound pack, which is absolutely idiot proof and there is no way in hell that I forget to dispel the tank on Etna now. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yet if that sounds like an episode, you want to train your Nelson impression by saying every time I mess up, then don't you worry, you gotta sound just like him at the end of this video. Oh yeah, and obviously I don't want to be a muppet saying, oh guys, did you know that more than 60% of you aren't subscribed? So just imagine a mildly disappointed hippo staring at you. Is that all you got? I can subscribe. Alright, so we ended the last episode with a beautifully played Dawnbreaker 9 after we reached out for some absolutely required and necessary help. With the new build and the new approach to healing after reading more than half of the tooltips, I was ready for more. And more shall come my way. However, first, I need to make a controversial adjustment to the series that will affect almost everybody, including my dad, who specifically said that he will not come back from the store if I underdeliver. But I will back down from the plus 12 key in order to successfully end the series. What? Two major reasons for this decision are in place, and I hope you will understand me afterwards. So hear me out. First is simply the time. I honestly thought that you guys were just mocking me when you said Ardruid is really hard, but that's actually the case if we're talking about the fully packed challenge. I thought I'd be way further ahead at this point and it's only due to my lack of ability that I'm not. So why is time an issue? I tell you, the amount of keys I applied to over the last few days and weeks that got instantly bricked or disbanded is disturbing. And while queuing up for plus 10 sometimes takes a lot more time, it's just really annoying if you apply to, let's say, 3 keys a day after work which all go nowhere. This is obviously just gonna get way worse with plus 12 keys in play as every tiny mistake will ensure somebody dipping the key right away without any hesitation. I don't think I can do that while also providing footage for one or two videos a week. And why can't I do that? Which is a giga 5 hit segue for the second reason, I'm frankly ass. What? Like legit saggy wrinkly ass at playing healer. My mind does not work like this. Taking care of the party while also not dying myself prepping everything 10 seconds in advance and then panicking at the slightest miscalculation, I'm just straight up not him. Also a little side reason, I kinda wanted to get one more series out in the current season which will be scuffed timing wise if we consider that it's a possibility for the next content patch to be out in February. Now I hope you understand me and hopefully won't be mad at my decision to back down from the plus 12, I simply bit off a lot more than I can chew. Disregarding, I will continue to play the druid further and I will do attempt plus 12 keys during this season for sure. And when that happens, you will be the first to know. It will just not be a requirement to end the series. Now then, since we didn't time a plus 10 key yet, and since I'm still very unsecure towards multiple dungeons considering their healing patterns, I was training. A lot. Especially Stone Vault. And boy, did all go differently for multiple reasons. With one specific thing that was always present and always apparent. Me messing up the dispel on Etna. However, it was not always my fault. You see, here our paladin used bubble and pretty much removed the debuff himself, which didn't even give me the opportunity to dispel, which I totally did not notice until somebody in my stream pointed it out. So he would have died anyways? But fear not, as it's not the only stone vault that triggers almost autistic tendencies of somewhat I call MIS, mechanic ignoring spastics. Arakara plus 9, beautiful run. Clean run, just perfect. But then the end boss hit and boy is this one special. Got clapped by one of the poison waves simply because I was only tunneling on HP bars. God I was struggling to heal people man. My ramping was horrible. The setup bad. No idea why I did that. But wait, there's more. This went from an easy 2 chest, 0 deaths, to a 14 deaths, 3 minute overtime real quick. And after a couple of time plus 9 keys in form of mist and stone vault, I was determined to come back to this haunted spider infested place. 
Similar situation. About 9 minutes for the last boss, being it a bit more rocky than the other, but all the time in the world for, I must say, 2 attempts. Yeah, scratch that. Ultimately, we killed this boss, and by saying we, I mean the tank by himself, but not after I got absolutely finger blasted Kakashi style by Tree of Life. You see, this shitty Yggdrasil cosplay is actually considered a shapeshift. And what happens to druids when they change their shape? They cancel roots. So if that tree runs out during the root, you're getting sucked in as the goo breaks apart. I think somebody actually told me this before, but I know well in hell I remember that till now. I quickly understood that this boss will be a hurdle and a half, that I have to get used to simply because I find healing on this boss very unpleasant. So much going on, and when you're the only poison to spell, it's really something else. The last key of this week was once again an Arakara, in which I stayed alive and happily collected 19 rating for a finally time plus 9 key. Happy beans, so let's jump into the vault for an item that I did not expect by all means. Though so one thing to mention, somebody sent me 10k gold on the druid to help me with my gold issues, which is something I deeply appreciate, however I will not use them. I planned on leaving it in the mailbox until the series is over, but I forgot about it and accidentally took it when I hit the take all button. So I put it in the war bank for now. And no, I sadly couldn't send it back, I tried. With that being said, vault baby! Yes! 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 Now what are the odds we either get some boots, which we desperately need, as they are 606 veteran, or even a big juicy trinket in form of the spy master or even the gale of shadows. But behold, as I already gave you a hint at the intro, egg rolls indeed have been buttered since I finally, for the first time, after playing 4 characters this season, got the brute sack on hero. Fantastic. What is absolutely not fantastic is me being a broke little bitch boy, as I got the juicy heist mastery ring from Grim Batol with a socket, but I can't afford one. Nonetheless, since it's a new week, let's talk about this week's affix. Even though I'm a firm believer that the Devourer affix is the worst to play for a healer, I feel like this one is way more annoying in general. While Salabon's bargain Oblivion is active, you are going to deal with 10 balls, <laughs> 10 balls that will eventually try to connect to opponents. To deal with them, you need to soak them up for a stacking mastery and leech buff, which is not that bad for a healer, as leech also extra heals you for all the healing you do to others. Weird how that works. But why is affix bad pussy? Great question, I'm glad you asked. Sometimes, and when I say sometimes, I mean a lot more often than you think, this affix goes off at really annoying situations or areas. First boss in Dawnbreaker or final boss in Siege, just to name a few. The punishment for not soaking the orbs is arguably even worse than Devourer at all. When not collected, enemies gain 10% damage done. Now, imagine 30 or 40% more damage done on your favorite boss that does a Dark Pulse mechanic. And trust me, I've seen it happen. Matter of fact, it happened to me. Oh yeah, and Fortified is also active again, but who gives a damn, because in plus tens, both Tyrannical and Fortified are apparent anyways. And one giga gg well played segue later, we found ourselves in a plus 10 dawn break, just like that. A lot of special pulls I need to overcome without choking, which is, well, easier said than done. While the first boss went fine, we had a different approach than many other parties. We started on the second mini boss, which is easily the toughest heal check of them three, and boy, did we ace that shit. Very pleasant when you can just stand still to heal, as the tank phases away from the party to bait the frontals. However, the deal breaker for this one was the second boss, for a very different way than you'd guess. I bet you sit there giggling, oh I bet you can't heal the overlap, to what I can say? Yeah, probably not, cause I even messed up on the pulse by itself. However, the actual issue was our tank dying to the tank buster. Now granted, he only had bark skin up to lift that himself, but then he said I need to top him. I was actually for certain he will lift it as a bear to be fair. Then we messed up the second pull, GG, go next. Mist plus 10 was the next key on my brick list and this one was a favorite during the stream. Not only did we already show up to the maze with 5 deaths from pretty much just dying to dumb stuff, we also double pulled onto the dragon which just escalated out of control so fast, you might believe this was an MDI run from a few weeks ago. If you know, you know. Disregarding, this went south. So south that Trump wanted to put a wall in that bitch. Also, can we talk about the absolute unnecessary frontal effects on this mob? Blue breath onto blue ground with blue stuff around. Is this some smurf fetish or what? You only see the breath after it hit you, which is arguably too late. Besides this wonky pull and the following wipe fest, we ended this key with not even 4 minute overtime, meaning without that one pull, we would have still timed it even though this run was not clean by all means. I like how the hunter was also complaining for me standing in melee on the boss, which I just did to be in range of everybody. Brother got slapped twice by the green puddles, this ain't my fault homie. And you know me, of course I mocked him on the final trash pull when he died again to the green circle. 
A bit bummed that we didn't time it, even though we had enough juice to make up for the few of those mess ups, I obviously wanted to treat myself to another stone vault key, but you can guess how that worked out. Pali died, mage, disconnected. My life! Oh. GG. At this point, I wanted a weak aura just for that dispel. I didn't want an entire dungeon weak aura set, as I always feel it makes fights annoying, and I much rather prefer to play the game as unedited as possible. Also, I'm used to having DBM or little wigs to tell you everything you need to know. But apparently, that's not gonna cut it. Granted, I still yet fail to understand why tanks do not pull a defensive if the smash is happening and the dispel didn't go through yet. I had this memory a bit different in my head. Apparently, he was the one that bubbled the debuff off of him, so for once, it was not my fault. I was wondering why he said it's his mistake, since I didn't even realize it in game. I just thought I missed the dispel completely. So yeah, I actually got myself a fully dungeon weak aura, in which I disabled everything but stone vault, just so we can go into the mist key and not use it right away. For what? Why? Okay, so can I ask you something? Did you ever have a feeling of everything is going to be alright when you join a party? Double Red Paladin into Augmentation, which means giga big damage, into a Brewmaster, which has a very high chance of being a good player since Brew is so far away from being a meta spec, plus the quite juicy amount of utility coming out of everybody. God damn, I was ready for this one. All packs got melted as well. So my duty was clear. Get my shit together and perform on the healing. The good thing about this dungeon is that big damage will absolutely decrease the amount of healing required. I know that's basic math for every boss or dungeon, but I feel like even more in this one. If you fail to kill the slave on the first boss, at some point Ingra will shroud himself in Embrace Darkness, which has a very nasty ticking damage applied to the party. Meaning the real party wide damage doesn't even go out if your party can slap the slave one quick enough. I also really like this boss, cause it's one of the few where you can just send it all in cat form, and you don't need to worry about convoking as a heal cooldown. 800k DPS in the end, while biting his ass for 6.5 million, we take that. So during the maze, it was the true moment where I realized how insanely cool a brewmaster monk is for a druid. This guy cannot get trucked. Every tank knows the anima slash on the guardians, and monks just eat that thing up like it's nothing. I also believe he just dodged a few of those a couple of times. Oh, and if you ask yourself where that one death is coming from, you already know it's your boy. Fuck dude! <laughs> dude, I don't even know why I stared the health bars on this mob. This dude doesn't do shit. The second boss also was just a stupidly easy thing with this kind of party, so the only two things I had to do is to root the fox and to use Convoke on the mirror, as it both heals and does damage. Oh, but what's that? Another death on the board? I wonder who that could have been. Look man, maybe a weak aura with a sound pack which tells you to move wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> Anyways, we killed the boss, killed the last bit of percentage and two chested our very first plus 10 of the series. I was so happy and I wanted to share my happiness with the group while thanking them for their effort. And then I just got absolutely drugged by this evoker. He was not having it man. So he said what he said and then instantly left the party. So in my book, that's just some incredible insecurity for playing a free ride spec. Since he can't perform on anything else, never mind he's a good player. Still a rude little wank that probably doesn't even get called by his own mother on his birthday. It happens man, I'm sure it's not your fault. But I digress. As you can imagine, I was hyped after finally timing a key even though I was the only one that died multiple times, so I was ready for more. Yet, in a kinda annoying turn of events, I was not ready. At all. Bro! No 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 no! Why am I so dumb, dude? Okay, that's it. I'm getting myself a weak aura that drop kicks me IRL when I have to dispel. 